Hello, welcome back to The Groomsman. Doing a unprompted, I uh, haven't tried it, uh, I haven't scheduled this video to talk about how to set a shave knot. I just finally got the knot in today. This is from AP Shape Co. It's one of their Jealousy Knots. This is a 28 millimeter. And I will be setting it in this one right here, which is a Prometheus Handcrafts. I bought the the handle off of the buy sell trade page and bought the not new from AP Shave Co. Now there's a couple options you have when you're setting knots. You can go for permanency, in which case I would recommend a two-part epoxy. Uh, it comes in a tube with two different um, fluids. I should have brought one up. I have a, a, a almost empty one down in the garage. Um, but it's got two different solutions and you mix them together so you pump both out at the same time. It's got a double plunger. And then you gotta mix it together with like a toothpick or a stick of some kind. And then mixing those two together creates a two-part epoxy, which is very permanent. And then you can use a toothpick or something to put some inside where you wanna set it. And then once that is set, it's permanent. It's not gonna come out without like cutting the knot, destroying the knot in order to drill out the, the, the glue knot part of the, the knot, which would suck. Um, or there's a less permanent solution, which is using silicone. Uh, so that's what I use. I used to use, I have used in the past, a two-part epoxy, and it works fantastic. But if you decide later on that you want a different knot, or if you decide later on that you want to change the loft, and by the loft I mean how whoop, how far down the knot is set into the brush handle, maybe you decide that you didn't give a lot of loft, and then it splays too much and it's too floppy, you don't like it, and you'd like a little bit more backbone, so then you could take it out and then set it deeper to get that that backbone, the, the deeper you set it, the, the least or the less amount of loft you have, the, the tighter it's gonna hold the base of those hairs so it's not gonna splay as much. So you get more backbone on your knot. The trade-off with backbone is because those brush hairs can't spread out as much, they tend to hold on a lather. So if you have a, a knot that's very dense um, and it's the loft is too low, you'll get what's commonly referred to as a lather hog because you'll lather, you'll still make a really good lather and like a bowl on your face, but it won't release a lot for that second and third pass. So you can squeeze that and like five facefuls of lather will come out of that brush because it just sits down there in between all those bristles where it can't really get out. So this is pushed all the way down to the bottom of the bore on this knot, which is pretty tight. I don't think I want to go that deep. Um, so to change the loft, there's probably some more professional ways to do it, but what I found is just to put spacers in there, right? So you can use pretty much anything you could think of to do spacers. I found quarters work pretty well. Um, I've seen some people that do, they'll get, they'll look for a quarter of a particular year group that means something to them. Maybe the year they do it or their birth year or something like that. Uh, I'm probably, I don't really care. So I just got two quarters out of my pocket. They both happen to be 2022s, uh, the new ones with, uh, what do you got in the back here? Maya Angelou on the back of the new 2020 quarters. They're nice and shiny. It just happened to be what I had in my pocket. Um, and then based off how much loft you want, you can add one quarter or two quarters. You could use nickels or pennies or whatever. Um, you could use washers to really nail down that diameter. If you want to be very specific, you could use epoxy and then level off the epoxy, let it harden, measure out how much loft you have. You want to go for a very specific millimeter of loft. Um, I'm just going to go for two quarters worth. And then I want that, the glue knot to be all the way down onto the quarter, right? So that's, I'm just kind of testing it right now to see how it looks. And I think it might be a little too floppy in the end. Well, there's only one way to know, right? If that's to set it and let it dry and then test it out. And if it's too floppy, then I can pull it back out and, and do it again. Take one of the quarters out maybe and just do one quarter's worth. But we'll try two to start it out with. Um, before I forget, if you did set it with the silicone and you decided that you wanted to remove it later the best way i found without damaging the brush is just to get a, a bowl like a lather bowl and then fill it with warmish to kind of hot water you don't want to get too hot you don't want to damage your brush but kind of warmish tap water it doesn't really need to be that hot and then just submerge your brush in it sideways in the bowl and then let it soak for a little while it'll heat up that epoxy just that warm water will and just not that long, 15 minutes or so, and they come out and you should be able to start like wiggling it a little bit and you'll feel it kind of loose. And then you just keep wiggling it and pull, like put some pressure and it'll separate that silicone. And then you can just peel off the little remnants of the silicone and then 
if you wanted to pull out the quarters and the silicone remnants off the bottom and then start the whole process over. But I think we're at that point. So two quarters, what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna put a silicone bead in the bottom and it doesn't need to be a lot. And I just use a tip of the of the tube to just spread it around a little bit. And I just want enough to, to seat that quarter on, right? So just a little bit, you can really see this clear silicone. The other thing I'd recommend if you do silicone or uh, two-part epoxy, make sure you get marine grade. Um, this one is architectural grade RTV, but it forms a water resistant seal. You wanna see that water resistant seal or marine grade, which implies the same thing, a water resistant seal. Because obviously these brushes are going to be introduced to water quite often. So you wouldn't want something that dissolves with water. So I took that quarter in there and just that little bit sticks right in there, doesn't move out. And then I'll do the same thing. I'll put another little bit of epoxy on top of that, that first quarter. You can kind of see it smeared on there. Second quarter is going in. And it's kind of pressed down with some firm pressure. Um, silicone doesn't take a long time to, to set. I think it says uh, apply in a well ventilated area. I'm not reading about it. Nope, doesn't even say. But it doesn't take long. I mean, it. it I read on the box, it only takes like an hour or something to cure. Uh, but I would recommend waiting overnight. I would wait at least eight hours to use it. The longer you wait, the the better that cure is going to set with that adhesive. So I got two quarters set in there. So now I'm going to run another bead. I say a bead. I'm not running caulk. It's just I'm smearing some on there, right? If you all have ever run like caulk, make sure I pronounce it right for the YouTube sensors. If you're going to run some adhesive on your bathroom. So my tube is kind of gunking up on me a little bit. So I just got a Q-tip that I pulled the swab off of to the clear out that. I don't know why. It, there it goes. Setting a little bit more of that adhesive. I've used this tube a couple times and it's got a lid but I think the adhesive that's inside the the tubing part of this I think between uses it's getting solidified and even though I push it down it, that like that makes a plug that keeps coming back up. So it doesn't need to be thick. If you put in too much, I would highly suggest you get like a paper towel and wipe some of it out or some toilet paper or something. Probably not toilet paper because it would rip off pieces inside your knot. Um, if you do get it all over the place, wet like water will rinse it off and just start over. It's better to start over than to make a mess out of things and it not work very well. Um, if you have too much, if you apply too much silicone or the two-part epoxy, any adhesive in there, and then you push the knot down, the silicone, because there's so much, it'll squeeze up the sides, which is exactly what you don't want. One, it's visible, which doesn't really look all that great, especially if you're not using a clear adhesive. I would definitely recommend using a clear adhesive. But if you do it right, it shouldn't matter if it's clear or if it's white, because it should not come up the side of your knot. If it comes up the side of your knot, the appearance of the glue coming up the side is only part of the issue and that's a very minor part because you're just talking about appearances, right? The bad part of that is if it comes to the side, it's going to hit where your bristles come off the top of that glue knot. And if you start getting hair, or excuse me, if you start getting glue inside the hair of your knot, that's going to not allow that knot to splay correctly. It's gonna really affect the performance of your brush in addition to it not looking that great. So definitely you don't want to add so much that it's squeezing up the side of the knot into your hairs. So if you got too much, just, just wipe it out. Even if you have to start all over by taking everything out, it's better to take the time than to get glue inside your knot. So I got some glue in there. It doesn't need to be heavy. Um, and again, I'm not going for permanency in here, but I've not had, I've used epoxy on several of my brushes and I've not had one fall out unintentionally. I have removed a couple to adjust the knot or just like the loft, but I never had one using epoxy that where I was like lathering on my face and it just popped out. I've never had that happen. So then I'm just gonna, I'm gonna squeeze the top of the brush because I want the bristles to be tight. Um, if they're 
flared out, then you'll scrape the edge of your, your bristles against the edge of the brush, and I don't want that. So I'm just gonna grab that firmly, and I'm just gonna seat it in there. And I just want firm contact with that quarter. And I'll probably rotate it a couple times just to make sure that adhesive is kind of smearing along the bottom of that knot. And then that's it. So then I'm gonna let that sit overnight, and then I'm gonna use that in the morning. That's the plan. So I'll report back um, on another shave video and let you guys know how that goes. And if I decide to do a re-knot or adjustment on this, if I decide to change the loft, I'll let you know about that too. Maybe do another one showing the adjustment. But it's pretty easy to set a knot. The, the only difficult part is trying to figure out how much loft you want and what you're gonna use to, to set that loft, whether it be quarters or washers or something. Um, but I hope that was informative. It's really easy to go out there and buy some brushes. Same process applies for if you're using a synthetic knot. Um, I put a synthetic knot in that one too. It's a craving shaving brush that I got uh, in a piff when I was pretty new into wet shaving. And it had a bore, a bore knot that was, it had a big hole in the middle just because it was used really heavily. So it's just losing hair and then it had a big kind of donut in the middle. So I bought a synthetic knot from Phoenix Artisan Accoutrement and then just set that in there. I actually used two-part epoxy on this one because I was new setting that out before I decided that silicone and uh, having some ability to adjust later was the way I wanted to go. But hope uh, that video was informative. Uh, let me know what you think or if you guys have different techniques out there that work better. Let me know. No, excuse me. Let me know about those too. I appreciate you guys tuning in and I hope these how-to videos are helping some of you out. Thanks for joining us. Hit those buttons if you like the video and have a good evening.